Hey Amen, guys. Well, good morning. It's uh, it's a privilege to be up here preaching the words. And you know, last time I was up here a few weeks ago, or uh, almost a, almost exactly a month ago, I preached a lesson. Now today we're going to do th things a little bit differently. And instead, I'm going to add, be asking you guys three questions. And so the title of what I have for us this morning is three important questions. Francis Bacon, an English philosopher and statement, statesman once said, a prudent question is one half of wisdom. And I believe that the, the, the one of the things that is the biggest thing that's standing in the way of where we're at and where we need to be for God are these three questions right here and being able to answer them how God would call us to. Let's start here in Matthew chapter 9. Come on, babe. Matthew chapter 9. And the first question I have for us is the question of caring. The question of caring. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness when he saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few ask the lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into the harvest field you know here jesus before he sends them out before he sends his disciples out to change the world, before he sends them out to, to preach the word to all nations, what he does is he takes his disciples into the streets, into the cities to, to see the, the, the sadness and the destruction of the world. Because if we don't understand where the world is at, if we don't ha have it in our hearts to actually care, for not where the, this this amphitheater is at. It is beautiful. Everybody looks amazing here this morning. Uh, that dog is amazing as well. You know, and and we have we have an awesome we have an awesome group here. We have awesome friends, awesome family. But the, the question isn't, man, are, are we going to be fired up for a Sunday service? The question is, are, are we going to care about a lost and dying world? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You know, you even take spirituality out of it. You look at the, the high Google the highest profiting nonprofits in the world. The high, the highest gross highest grossing donation based organizations. But far and away, the organizations that take in the most money are the ones that do the best job of communicating visually the need that they're trying to address. You look at the Red Cross. Well, why, why does, how is the Red Cross able to take in so much money? Wow. Well, they, 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 do, they put so much money into advertising to allow the, the people of this world to see the, the darkness and the destruction that, that's happening in, in villages around the world. The, 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 the hardship that people are going through because of, of tornadoes and, and storms and tsunamis. They do such a good job that people see the pain. And the destruction, they say, I need to do something about that. Yeah. Come on, bro. And they get online, they give 20 bucks. They give 50 bucks. They give five bucks. And when you have enough people that have it in their heart to care a little bit, you can make a huge difference. Yeah. 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 I believe that a lot of the, 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 the reason why we're not having the in, impact individually for God that we need to have is because we're not caring enough Talk about it, bro. and why that is is let's go here to john chapter 14. Come on, bro. john chapter 14. 
And in John chapter 14, Jesus answers in verse 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, here Jesus is somebody who cared so deeply that he was willing to do whatever it takes to get this message out. That he was the way. That he was the life. That, that he was the truth. Now, a lot of us, we're, we're at a place of not caring as much as we need to because we don't really see. We don't, you know, you, you wake up in the morning and, you know, it's like, man, I, I could go to God right now. You know, I, I could go out and pray. I could go, could, 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 go, could go and really get into the scriptures and could get to the, connected to God. But you know what, man? I, today, I just got work at noon. And, you know, and then I got, you got this going on after. I mean, up with a friend at eight, I'm going to sleep a couple more hours. Uh -oh. You know, and, and, and we go day by day. You know, we go day by day sleeping in. You know, we go day by day. You know, not go, going out sharing our faith, not getting into a Bible study. You know, we get we may get invited out to a church service or Bible study. We just don't care enough to really invest our hearts. And why is that? It is because we don't really see. And what it's it's a revolving door because when we don't care enough, when we don't care enough to actually go and connect to God, when we don't care enough to get it into the Bible study, to get to know God, there, there, there's a yoke that comes to rest on us. Where it, it, even when we have a flicker of hope to care, there's something that, that seems to be holding us back from really taking any action. And we find that in Lamentations chapter 1. Lamentations chapter 1. Come on, Come on, babe. Come on, bro. And in Lamentations chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible reads, My sins have been bound into a yoke. By his hands they were woven together. They have been hung on my neck. And the Lord has sapped my strength. He has given me into the hands of those I cannot withstand. Mm. <laughs> and you know, this may be how, how you came here this morning. Amen. Where you, you just feel like you, you don't have the strength to care. You, you, you don't have the, the energy to care. You think, man, even if I cared, how much my effort would actually move the needle isn't anywhere at all. That whether I care or not, the world's going to burn. Whether I care or not, God's going to win. Whether whether it's on a, uh, through a negative lens or what we see as a, a positive lens, we feel that no matter what we do, we're not going to make an impact. And why we get there is because over time, the sins in our life, right? The, the, the sins of gluttony, the sin of, of impurity, the, 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 the sin of folly, of laziness, of bitterness, they, they, they slowly start to choke us out and we get to a place where we just don't even care. Mm. You know, you, we get invited. I'll, I mean, I'll come to a Bible study. <laughs> I'll come to church. It's what I should do. It's a good thing. But, but our heart's not in a place on, bro, where we're it. really caring. And the, the, now the awesome thing is, guys, is that God has wired us physiologically to have a heart to care. We, we actually have something that's called the vagus nerve that surrounds our heart, that allows us to empathize with people, that allows us to see people in a destitute state, see people who are depressed, see people, see our, our parents or our brothers or our sisters who are, who are going through divorce, who are, who are going through hardship, who are going through, through depression. We see that and there's something deep physiologically inside us that cares. We just have to get our hearts to where our, our, our vagus nerve is, where we're actually caring about those in our life 
and those going through hardship. Now that leads me to my second question, which is the question of righteousness. The que if you go to Jeremiah chapter 30, this yoke of sin that, that, that's weighing us down, God has a way out. In Jeremiah chapter 30, In Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 8, reads, In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. You know, right here, it gives us God's vision for our lives. And that's the, the God's vision for our lives is to be free yeah. from that yoke. But what's standing in the way of us and our freedom, us and the impact we know deep down we want to have is the question of righteousness. You know, for, for, for each and every one of us, I believe that, that we're here this morning because we want to be used by God. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're sitting in the seat, not because you got invited out, not, not because it was a convenient place to come, not because you thought it might be, no, no, no. We're, I, I know that deep down, each and every one of us are sitting here today because we, we want to have an impact for God, you know, I, I think of myself, and going. It's been awesome being in Santa Cruz, yeah. right? Living in one of the most beautiful places uh, on the California coast. And it's it's been amazing. But the thing about a moving hundreds of miles from Sacramento, where I was at before, to Santa Cruz, the thing about no matter where you move, your character tends to follow you. That's true. You know, it doesn't matter if you're living in New York. If you're living in Brazil, if you're, if you're living in Mexico City, it doesn't matter. Where, wherever we go, our character comes with us. Yeah. And uh, it, no, the, the rent prices didn't come with me from Sacramento, <laughs> Saturday, But, uh, uh, but my, my, my character came with me. And, you know, landing in Santa Cruz with, with so much vision, so much hope, having an incredible inaugural service almost 400 people there in, in the coconut ballroom yep. overlooking the boardwalk. So, yeah. so, such a beautiful time, such an incredible mission team. But what I found going down there is that, man, I, 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 had, to, I had to and have to make a decision to uh, allow the, the yoke of my character flaws not to enslave me. You know, getting down there, the, the yoke of folly, the yoke of, of not being disciplined, in my day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. the, 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 yoke, the yoke of unspirituality. Yeah. The yoke of not wanting to, to truly, deeply connect with God every day, but just giving some time to God because I, I knew I had to. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, leading, I'm, leading a, I'm leading a region of a church. I, I need to have some sort of spirituality. But, but that being my motivation. Now the, the yoke of a lack of love for God. And, you know, it was weighing on me. Not only was it weighing on me, it was weighing on the awesome region that we have. You know, and he, it was weighing on me through John, John 15. Let's go here. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Let's go. Bro. John 15. Come on, babe. This is awesome. Let's go, And John 15, the scripture was echoing through my mind over the last 30 days in John chapter 15 verse 1 Come on. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruits well every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful you are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. 
it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruits unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. He continues, if anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples in the church said. Amen. You know, I, I love this passage because it, it's a promise from Jesus. He said, hey, if you remain in me and, and my words remain in you, he said, don't worry, you're, you're going to bear much fruit. You're going to be fruitful. You're going to produce a harvest of righteousness. You're going to produce a harvest of disciples. You're gonna, people are just going to fall into your lap who want that relationship with God. But as he says, in verse 5, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And, you know, we moved down there to Santa Cruz. And, you know, I, I had, I, 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 I was focused, ready to go, locked in. And, and ministry-wise, I said, hey, we're, we're, we're going to have times to go out and share our faith. You know, we're, we're going to walk out these hour, two-hour, three-hour blocks, go out, share the good news, invite people out to, to hear God's word. And we, we, we set up these times to share. We set up these times to, to go after it, to allow people to hear the good news. But as I was so focused on doing the work, I neglected the most important thing, which was my righteousness. And I, I would say, man, why am I, it feels like I'm banging my head into a wall. Day after day, I, I'm doing work for God. But, but, but that joy isn't there. I'm doing work for God, but that vision isn't there. I'm doing work for God, but that fruit isn't there. Yeah. And, and, and I just had to reflect, and I realized really how prideful and stubborn I was. I was trying to achieve the goal that I wanted. I wanted to advance the region. I want everybody to be fired up. I wanted to achieve the goal without really getting rid of my deep-seated sin. You guys know what I'm talking about that? Yeah. Where, where we, we, we know where we want to go, but we want to go sort of the, the, the way that we can get there without really dying to ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, if you, look at, if you read the scriptures, you go from Genesis to Revelation. For people, God's people who really want to get closer to him, there's a theme of prayer and fasting. Yeah. Of prayer and fasting. And, you know, I was at a point in time, I, you know, I'd go and pray. And, you know, I'd say, you know, I'd pray, I'd pray. I'd say, man... But uh, oh, somewhere over the last few years, I, I lost the conviction of fasting. You know what? what to, for vision, for hope, for, 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 for purity of heart. And I, I lost that conviction. I was trying to find ways around it. Ways of, of lack of uh, uh, finding ways to, let, to get away, away from my lack of discipline. To get around my, my lack of conviction. To get around all the, these different things. But... It finally just came and sat on my, the, the, the issue just came and just sat on my chest and started suffocating me. And said, man, if you don't, it, it, God was telling me, hey, if you don't get close to God in, in your life, your life's not going to be fruitful. You're not going to have a joy in your marriage. You're not going to be able to lead your wife. And I found myself as I was doing the work of God, but not staying righteous. Not only was the region not being fruitful, I was getting snappy with my wife. I wasn't leading her well. I was being independent. I was just doing my own thing. And God finally came to me and said, hey, you've got to repent or perish. Wow. And you know that this past week, I said, you know what, I'm done. I'm, I'm going after fasting. And we said as a region, we said, we said you know, what? we're going to do an all night prayer. Because yeah. yeah. I said, man, if I'm going to get radical, you guys are going to get radical. Yeah. Yeah. And this last week, just going after God like I haven't in years. 
And even though the last seven days, I've probably gotten the least amount of sleep I've gotten in a couple of years. But I've, I've eaten the least amount I have in the last couple of years. But I'm as fired up, joyful, and energized to serve God as I've been in years. And it's a decision that each of us have to make to, to put on that yoke of righteousness. Answer the question of righteousness. We're, we're, we're not going to get to where we need to be without righteousness around our necks and guiding our life. You know, I want to continue here and go to Leviticus Let's go. chapter 26. Come on, bro. And in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 3, this is an incredibly encouraging passage right here. Chapter 26, verse 3, Leviticus. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, Answering the question of righteousness right here. He says, I will send you rain in its season and the ground will yield its crops and the trees of the field their fruits. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest and the grape harvest will continue until planting and you will eat all the food you want and live in safety in your lands. I will grant peace in the lands and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. I will remove savage beasts from this land and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the swords before you. Wow. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. I will put my dwelling place among you and I will not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people. I am the Lord your God yes. who brought you out of Egypt so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high Amen. Yes, sir. and this Amen. is uh this is the rewards of righteousness this sounds pretty awesome right here does it not yes. oh, yeah. the, i believe that whether you're visiting with us whether you've been in the, uh, the church for 10 years i believe this is what we want our lives to look like oh, yeah. uh -huh. sure. now what he says we we we, we see all the, the victories and the and and it says that the harvest that's brought in and man talking about a hundred chasing ten thousand they're fallen by the sword but if you look at verse three, he prefaces it. He says, if you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands. Now, maybe you're, you're, you're looking at your life and you're thinking, man, I, I, I'm not having this harvest of righteousness. I'm not joyful right now. I, I'm not having victory after victory. Well, 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 we have a next passage here. Verse, verse 14, he continues. He says, but if you will not listen to me, and carry out all these commands. Uh -oh. And if you reject my decree and abhor my laws and fail to carry out all my commands and so violate my covenant, then I will do this to you. Mm -hmm. I will bring upon you sudden terror, wasting diseases and fever that will destroy your sights and drain away your life. You will plant seed in vain because your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you so you will not, so you will be defeated by your enemies. Those who, who hate you will rule over you and you will flee even when no one is pursuing you. If they're after all this, you will not listen to me. I will punish you for your sins seven times over. I will break down your stubborn pride and make the sky above you like iron and the ground beneath you like bronze. Your strength will be spent in vain 
because your soil will not yield its crops, nor will the trees of these land, the land yield their fruit. And we'll stop right there. Come on, bro. You know, here it's a very sobering picture of what our life, life will look like if we're not answering the question of righteousness. And, you know, the scripture that really stuck out was verse 19. For me, he says, I will break down your stubborn pride. And he says, I will make the sky above you like iron. And the reality is, is when we're just in sin, when, when we're not seeking God with all our heart, sometimes we, we, we try to, to we're, we're falling and stumbling and going into sin and, and, and falling day after day after day. We try to shoot up a prayer and it's like it hits a wall of iron. It hits a ceiling of iron. God, I, I need you. Boom. Comes back. It's like it, it hits a wall. On, God, God I, I need you. Why, why aren't you listening to me? Why, why is my life in destitute? God's saying, you need to answer the question of righteousness. Yes. Come on, bro. You need to not just, amen, we, we all have work. We all have things we need to take care of. But God's saying, you need to prioritize me in your life. Yeah. A lot of us have been going through a lot of hardship recently. Yeah. And we think, man, wh why, why is this? God, wh what are you trying to teach me? He is trying to teach you to fight for righteousness. Yeah. You know, the, the, the reality is, is that we, we, we get so focused on so many areas of our life, we can forget the baseline foundation that God calls us to. And that's the question of righteousness. I want to call us, if you're visiting, to, to answer the question of righteousness by studying the Bible. To, to sit down over the coming days and weeks and say, man, what, what does it look like for my life? To answer this question. I, I have, you're right, I have been going through hardship. Friends, family, I, I've been going through a lot at work. I've been going through a lot or just, just mentally. I, I've been going through, right, what, what, what does that look like? What is God trying to call me to? Get into the scriptures. See what he's calling you to. Man, if you're a disciple, make a decision. It's so simple. You know, it's so funny in life when we know we need to change, we try to evaluate everything beforehand. You know, we, we, it's like uh, uh, when you're like, you know, I'm going to start getting into shape, but first I need to get my supplements. You know, I, I mean, I can't, I would start working out, but I don't have protein powder. It's all going to go to waste. It's going to be in vain if I don't have that whey protein. You know, it's, you know, it, it, well, until well, my next paycheck comes, then I'll be able to go meal prep and I'll be able to get my fruits and veggies and, 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 and chicken, chicken breast. And then, then I'll be able to start eating healthy. But until then, I'm going to eat it in and out at McDonald's a few more times. But when the paycheck comes, then I'm repenting. You know, and the same thing can happen spiritually. You know, we look at our work schedule, our school schedule. Man, I have a lot coming up these next couple of weeks. But God, when I knock this out, I, after I finish this week, after I finish this chapter, God, then I'm going to go after you. God's saying, no, 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 no. You're going to go after me right now. He's, a, he's calling us right now. This is the call. Kelly Park, right here. You, to make the decision, you know, going out, I was going to, you may be thinking in your heart, man, I was going to really go after God after this week. I was going to go out. Once the fall semester hit, I was going to really pursue God. God said, no, no, no. Pursue me right now. Amen. Yeah. Let's answer the question of righteousness. The third question we need to answer is the question of perseverance. Let's go to Galatians chapter six. Galatians chapter 6, you know, the, the, the final page of any transformation is the question of perseverance. Galatians chapter 6. Come on, bro. The question of perseverance. You know, before I left Sacramento, I was super proud of myself. I was tracking everything I was eating for a month. I was going to the gym every week. I was fired up. And I was going after it. And, you know, I moved to Santa Cruz about a month ago. I haven't been to the gym once. <laughs> so uh, this is, I'm preaching this to myself as well right here. Amen. Galatians chapter 6. The question of perseverance. Galatians chapter 6. 
verse 7. Come on, bro. The Bible reads, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from the, that nature will reap destruction. Is that not the truth? Yeah. The one who sows to please the spirits, from the spirits will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. You know, here God, God lays it out. He says, you know what? I'm not going to allow you to mock me. I'm not going to allow you to live however you want and then have an abundant joy in your heart. I'm not going to allow you to just go off the rails spiritually and still bear fruits. He says, I'm not going to be mocked. You reap what you sow. And the cool thing about the scriptures is that uh, biblical principles transcend the spiritual realm. The reality is, is that we reap what we sow in our life at school. You know, you're, 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 you're so upset you get, didn't get into your, your, your number one college in high school, right? And, hey, God, God was telling you, hey, you reap what you sow, right? You, you, you say you're going to study for the SATs. You procrastinate, procrastinate, didn't study. All right, you denied, denied, denied. You know, and I can speak from experience. Man, I wanted to get into this college, this college, this college. God's saying, no, you, you, you reap what you sow, buddy. Right? You're, you're, you're not getting around it. In our job, we, we, we want that promotion, Right, but but we're, but we're doing the bare minimum. But God, I want that promotion. God said, no, 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 no. You reap what you sow. Right. In our marriages, man, I, I want the type of marriage that couple has. But we're, we're not investing into to, to getting in there with our wife, building that, that the, the, asking those deep questions, spending that time. In the same way with our relationship with God, God, I want to be close to you. Right. But God's saying, you know, you're giving me five minutes every morning. You know, you're, you're spending more time on TikTok than you are on my words. And God's telling you, buddy, you, you, you reap what you sow. And, you know, I, I believe that the, the, the reality is, is that we, we live in a, a society that is just thrown off the yoke of, of perseverance. We live in a, a time where uh, our society values, values personality more than we value character yeah. Talk about it, bro. you know it's like you go downtown san jose you go on campus and you say tell somebody hey i know seven languages they'll be oh that's cool you up to somebody on san jose state say hey i i have i have seven hundred thousand followers on tiktok oh my gosh yeah. what wait wait oh my gosh what, what's your name let me follow you will you follow me back da -da 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 -da. it's like we, we live in a time where personality right be, being funny right by right by right, being attractive being being be, being uh, just the, the, the coolest guy in school is, is the thing to be. But God said, I, I don't look at the things that people look at. Yeah, that's right. I look at the character. You know, this last, last weekend, uh, I drove up to Humboldt, Humboldt County, where I'm from, for a, a wedding. Come on. Uh, just beeline just for the day. Drove up there, went to the wedding, drove back. It was like six hours both ways. But... Uh, uh, be, being up there just for a couple hours for a wedding, I, I saw a lot of old high school friends. And it was great to connect. But man, just seeing that a lot of these guys who I went to high school with 10 years ago, aging myself a little bit there, that's crazy. I grad Next year will be my 10-year high school reunion. And it seems like like three months ago I was graduating. So uh, it's kind of nuts. But But seeing these people... They're the exact same people they were in high school. Yeah, that's true. They're the, the exact same character, the exact same personalities. Put put on a little weight, the majority of them, but 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 the, the exact same person. And it's like, man, and it's like, well, because if we're not careful, we're going to be the same people we are at, at 30, 40, 50 as we were at 18. If we don't answer the question, of perseverance. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. And this is a very real thing. 
Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. That's challenging right there. Yep. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, mm. perseverance character, mm -hmm. and character hope. Yeah. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Yes. You know, I believe that all of us want hope in our lives. Yeah. We, 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 we want something to look forward to. We, we want that joy, that, that, just, that, that bumbling joy every day that, that, to just in our, in, deep in our hearts to just propel us forward into our, into our next venture, into the next thing we have going on. But even though a lot of, we all want hope, a lot of us don't want those first couple of things because to get to hope, you got to go through the gauntlet of suffering, perseverance, to get to character, to get to hope. You know, a lot of us, we, we, we wonder why we haven't grown. God, I'm the same. I'm fighting the same sins. I'm fighting the same things I have. Man, it was five years ago. Last year. God, this is the same thing I went through six months ago. Yeah. God, God's putting the same test in front of you <laughs> until you figure it out. Yep. Yeah. Well, until you, you, you persevere through that suffering mm -hmm. to on. get to that character to reach that hope. You know, the reality is, is when a lot of us start to suffer, rather than turn to God, we, we turn to sin. Right? We, we turn to sin. I feel overwhelmed. Man, we, 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 we turn to pornography. I feel overwhelmed. We turn to sleep. I feel, I mean, I feel challenged by the, 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 the things that people put in front of me. We get bitter. Right? I, I, man, my boss doesn't know me. My household leader, my disciple doesn't get me. And we, 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 we just turn, we, we blame, 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 shift, blame, shift, blame, shift. Never take it upon ourselves. And that, that, that's the heart. Man, what, what could I do better? Man. And we'll, we'll save ourselves from so much. If we start looking at situations, something goes wrong at work, something goes wrong in our household, we take the, the first things, man, what, man, I'm starting to suffer right now. Okay, what could I do better? How, how could I personally improve the situation and when, when we start to just sit in the suffering and understand that there's a godliness in suffering man man i got oh i got i got this parking ticket oh my gosh i i i don't I only have 60 dollars in my bank account but it's it's 65 dollars that i've contributed god god's calling you hey hey yeah yeah you're, you're suffering right out man I, i'm calling you to get a better job Right? Yeah, if you're man. you're constantly having financial hardship, God's gonna need to be more disciplined with your finances. Yeah. He's calling us to get a better job. Yeah. Or may, maybe it's just man, may like plan things out more. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But rather than looking at financial hardship after financial hardship after financial hardship, and just man, this all right, who's who's whose fault is it this month? This fault is my roommates. You know, next oh fault it's the, it was that somebody needed gas. I didn't know they were gonna ask me for gas money. They did. The next month, it's this. The month, next month, it's that. No, 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 no. God's calling you to be more disciplined in your finances. Maybe, maybe it's men. Maybe it's your mornings. Now, God, I, I wanted to spend my mornings with you, but God, I just never have energy. I wake up, I never have energy. Man, maybe God's calling you to go to bed earlier. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 To go to bed. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's maybe it's a dietary issue. Ooh, you know, I, I was that. just just telling my buddy here at the, at the break. That, uh, you know, back when I was in high school, before a basketball game at lunch, I'd go to McDonald's, get two McDoubles, large fry, large Coke, and I could go out and play basketball for an hour and a half. You know, be fired up, feel awesome. I can't do that now. I can't do that now. You know, and sometimes I, I, I want but my nature. I, you know, I want, man, I want to go get that cheeseburger, those fries. And I, I want that because it, it feels good. It feels good in the moment. But I know what that's going to look like tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall asleep. 
I'm gonna feel groggy in the morning. I know what that looks like. So I came up to my buddy here at the break. I said, hey, let's go get some salads after this, huh? Yeah. Yeah, let's go get some, let's go to Sweet Greens right there in Sunnyvale, huh? And, and, and that, that was through a lot of suffering, I came to that place. <laughs> through a lot of suffering through my mornings, Persever trying to persevere through the day with no energy. Man, God's calling us to maybe change our diet. Yeah. Go to bed earlier. So on, start, man. start, and it's, it's, it can be, it's sort of like a game. It's fun when you get to, get to figure out, shift the knobs a little bit, right? Shift the knobs of our life. But a lot of times the knob we just need to shift, shift is perseverance, yeah. right? Yeah. We, we just have Thank zero you. perseverance and we try to navigate through our lives without learning this element, without learning perseverance. But it's what's going to get us to the end. And what's going to get us to the end? What's going to happen when we get to the end? Well, let's close out here in Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. And Revelation chapter 21, when we get a handle of perseverance and rather think then, man, when is this pain going to end? We start to shift, what could I learn through this pain? And once we, once we get that shifted, and once we figure that out and persevere to the end and grow stronger and stronger, God has this for us in Revelation 21 verse 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who is seated in the throne on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this. And I will be his God and he will be my son. Mm. You know, here God's saying, he says, man, I, I'm the beginning and the end. What you're going through right now, the hardship you're going through, even the life that we're in, it's one day all going to end. You know, I, I said, man, I have my 10 year anniversary, uh, I have my 10 year uh, high school reunion coming up. A lot of people laughed like, man, I graduated 30 years ago. Ew. I graduated 40 years ago. And it, it's, we, we, as our, we, we go through life, our, our perspective change and things just go so fast. My grandma's 93 years old. And you're just talking with her, she laughs at her age. She said, Man, I'm so old. She said, I, I, I don't know what happened. She, she tells me stories of when she was a teenager, when she was 12 years old, 15 years old in high school. And she says, Man, you know what? She was born in the 1920s. And she says, you know what? I, 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 don't, I don't know what happened. It, it, it just, it went so fast. And God's calling you, calling you today saying, you know what? It, it's gonna be hard. John, and John Jesus says, hey, in this life, you will, you will have hardship. Yeah, exactly. Regardless of if you're following the Bible or not, hardship's going to be in your life. But Jesus says, take heart. I've overcome the world. Yeah. Yeah. And family, understand that, that we're, we're going to go through hardship. But if we, we, we latch on to, to, the, to the, the destruction of the world, we latch on and lock in and understand, man, I, I, we've got to care. Yeah. I've got to, if, if I don't care, nobody's going to do it. Right. We, we have to understand that God has you right here because he, he wants you to be part of the solution. As we answer the, the question of caring, answer the, the question of righteousness, make the decision today that you're, you're not going to deal with the yoke of sin. The, 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 the yoke of man, all right, now I got to get open and I, I have the sin on my heart. Do I can, we, we, we can get so focused on the sin in our hearts and, and what we're going through that, we, that we, it, it loses any impact we're actually having on a lost world. Mm. Throw off that yoke. Take on the yoke of righteousness. Yeah, 
the yoke of self to not waking up early. Yeah. I just want to try to just wake up a little early tomorrow. Yeah. Have an, an extra deep time with God. Yeah. Throw on that yoke of, of righteousness. Answer that question of righteousness that we may answer the question of perseverance. Drink that, 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 that glass of water that he has for us, that water of life yeah. that we may make it to the end and change this lost and dying world. I love you guys. Let's have a great week. Yeah.